There are many reasons one may get lupus. It's hard to often prove whether it's genetics, an infection, or stress. But sometimes we can pinpoint a cause and that's when it is due to a prescription medication or when it's drug-induced lupus. Drug-induced lupus is a specific type of lupus that is the result of a prescription medication and has a particular flavor of symptoms and type of blood test results, including the antihistone antibody. So today, I'm going to talk about what is drug-induced lupus and how it differs from regular or systemic lupus, what drugs can cause it, and how to interpret the antihistone antibody. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. Okay, so let's dive into the details of drug-induced lupus. Drug-induced lupus is a specific form of lupus that occurs when a certain medication triggers an autoimmune reaction that then results in lupus-like symptoms. These symptoms will usually start after taking the medication for several months, although it occurs even after being on the medication for years. We can sometimes get worried that immediate side effects of a medication could be drug-induced lupus, but it usually doesn't happen that quickly. So what does this look like? The symptoms are very similar to what you may think of with classic systemic lupus erythematosus. Symptoms such as joint pain, muscle pain, fever, serositis, which by the way, is inflammation of the lining of our organs like our lungs and heart, and a rash are common. But drug-induced lupus has a few key differences from the more classic lupus. Namely, drug-induced lupus rarely affects the major organs. When we first diagnose systemic lupus, one of the main things we, as rheumatologists, will do is look for any evidence of what we call major organ involvement. This just means that we're looking to see if there's any inflammation in the kidneys, the brain, heart, or any other organ. We do this because if there is inflammation in one of these organs, it can lead to serious complications and so we'll approach our treatment plan taking this into account. But with drug-induced lupus, organ involvement is much less common, which is actually good news in terms of prognosis. This means that we don't usually have to turn to our more aggressive treatments as the risk for a major complication is pretty low. And what's another major distinction? Drug-induced lupus often goes away once the triggering medication is stopped. This is not the case with systemic lupus, which is a chronic autoimmune disease that requires ongoing treatment. So while the symptoms of drug-induced lupus can feel just as uncomfortable and disruptive as those with systemic lupus, the road forward is obviously very different. Okay, so let's get into what everyone wants to know. Which meds are we talking about? What medications can lead to drug-induced lupus? The most well-known culprits include medications used for blood pressure, heart rhythm problems, and fighting infections. So let's just go through these. Hydralazine is a medication used to treat high blood pressure. Procainamide is prescribed for heart rhythm problems as is quinidine. Isoniazid is a treatment for tuberculosis and minocycline is used for acne or other skin infections. And then there's TNF-alpha inhibitors. Now this one is so annoying because TNF-alpha inhibitors are biologic medications used for rheumatoid arthritis, psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, amongst other conditions. So yeah, a medication that can put your RA in remission could also cause drug-induced lupus. And yes, I get just as frustrated and disappointed as my patient when this happens. This list is far from complete as there are many drugs that have been reported to lead to drug-induced lupus, but for many of those other drugs, we're talking about just the rare case report. Now, not everyone who takes these medications will develop drug-induced lupus. In fact, most won't as it's relatively rare. But if you're on one of these medications and you start experiencing lupus-like symptoms, it's important to touch base with your doctor. So how do we diagnose drug-induced lupus? It all starts with recognizing the symptoms we talked about earlier, new joint pain, muscle pain, fevers, rash, or serositis. And if you don't know, serositis will feel like chest, rib, or back pain that gets worse with deep breaths, coughing, or laying down. With both drug-induced and systemic lupus, to get started, we need a high level of suspicion, which means we need to be thinking about it. I'm starting to have my suspicions. In order for it to be on the list of things your doctor considers, 
they need to know what medications you're on, when you started them, and what your symptoms are and when those started. We may assume that our doctors know this information about us, but if we are seeing specialists, as many who are taking the most common offending medications are, sometimes our doctors don't have all these details. This means you need to have this information. And if you need any guidance on how to collect or how to think about your symptoms, download the free Appointment Home Run Handbook. The link is in the description box. This handbook will get you thinking and taking note of your symptoms and your history so you can tell your story so the doc can get you answers. So just like systemic lupus, if drug-induced lupus is being considered, your doc will order blood tests. And although they will order a bunch of tests because, you know, that's what we do, there is one test not usually done that they will order in these circumstances. And that's the antihistone antibody. The histone antibody is positive in about 95% of drug-induced lupus cases, making it an unusually strong marker for this particular condition. The histone antibody can also be seen in systemic lupus, but it's not positive nearly as often in this type of lupus, so we don't often check it or use it to help us make a diagnosis of systemic lupus. So what is the antihistone antibody? Well, histones are proteins that help organize our DNA, so they're found in the nucleus of our cell. So you can see how if the target of this antibody, the histone, is found in the nucleus, these antibodies are anti-nuclear antibodies. Thus, people with drug-induced lupus will have a positive ANA, or anti-nuclear antibody. But here's the thing, not everyone with a positive antihistone antibody has lupus. Some people have low levels without symptoms, so as always, it's not just about the test result, but about your test result in context with your symptoms. Well, what about the other antibodies that we'll often see in lupus, like the anti-double-stranded DNA or the anti-SMIN? Well, it's a great question. Interestingly, these antibodies, which are considered classic in systemic lupus, are largely negative in drug-induced lupus. So we have a high suspicion and we check the antihistone antibody and it comes back positive. What now? Well, we stop the offending medication, maybe start some prednisone or other anti-inflammatory medication and watch as the symptoms and the antibody levels resolve. In some cases, the symptoms may take longer than we'd like or they don't resolve at all. In those situations, we may rely on our more typical lupus medications such as hydroxychloroquine, methotrexate, or azathioprine, but still with an eye on this only being temporary. So as you can see, drug-induced lupus is its own thing. Despite sharing a name and many symptoms of the classic systemic lupus, Drug-induced lupus requires a different set of testing and a different approach to treatment. If you find yourself on any of the medications listed and now have new symptoms, ask your doctor if drug-induced lupus should be considered and if you should have your antihistone antibody checked. If you have had the antibody checked and it has returned positive, discuss with your doctor whether your symptoms match those of drug-induced lupus, as remember, many can have the antibody without having the condition. As I am always reminding everyone with an earshot, lab results like these are just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to understanding an autoimmune disease. I hope you found this video helpful and have a better understanding of drug-induced lupus and the antihistone antibody. If you wanna learn more about autoimmune blood testing and the ANA in particular, I recommend watching this video next. And don't forget to download the Appointment Home Run Handbook to prepare for your next doctor's appointment. Thanks, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.